Hey there guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to get rank 1 on the Beowulf Clash of Wills. Now, that being said, if you've seen the in-game news, or you saw my live stream, or you tried the fight yourself, you know that one of the modifiers is currently bugged. The HP lock, if you turn it on at this point in time, the, you can't kill the boss. The boss locks permanently at 50% HP, you can't go below. They did put out a news bulletin, they're going to be fixing this, but um, this clear that I'm going to show you will work exactly the same way when they do fix this. So for the sake of the video, we are going to turn on every modifier except for the HP lock, and as you're going to see in the video, um, you'll do the exact same thing when the HP lock is currently working. Anyway, this is the party we're going to be using. We're going to be using the same party that I used on my live stream. I've just now optimized it and cleaned up the clear. Um, and again, this clear will be identical after they fix the HP lock bug. So let's get in here and give it a go. I'll show you my turn chart and all in the comments, and then we'll go to the gear at the end, etc. You know, you know what I'm saying. Okay, so for the ambush, the boss puts up a field and some defense and spirit buffs. Not really worried about that. We're going to spend the first few turns just doing setup. So Flaring Rain on turn one will do his shifted LB just to stack it up. We're going to use Nora on turn one to quad cast. We're going to do Esoteric Lightning, both the Conquerors and Living for Two to fill the morale gauge. Dwayne on turn one will do Blood Shield, Fire Imbue, and then just hit the boss. Sylvie will do her base form Magnus and then Petals and Vines. We're going to really try to rush that morale gauge as quickly as we can. Melissa is going to do Shared Immunity, Seathonic or Chronic Flow, and then Parasol Shield on turn one. And then Abigail is going to do Cover. We're going to do a bigger Magic Break on turn one, and then we're going to do Contingency Plan. Now, turn one is relatively painful if you're not using a good tank, but we are using Abigail, so we're going to be fine. And here we go, some magic damage we're going to cover. Okay. Now, we're going to be doing our biggest burst on turn three. Now, before you freak out and worry about the morale gauge and all, um, you should still, with this party, even if your morale gauge is not super high on turn three, you should still overcap the damage with the party I'm using. So let's go ahead and get ready for bursting next turn. So Nora is going to quad cast. We're going to do the accuracy increase buff. We're going to do the field to get rid of the boss's field. We're going to do burst for a bigger thunder and peril. And then we're going to do last action, her 150 amplify. Rain is going to do his 150 amplify. We'll also just do... Um, Undermine and the killer buff. We're gonna have Sylvie go to the shift form here. We're gonna do demon killer on rain. We're gonna use I've got your back on rain. That's mostly just to rush that morale gain. This is a big morale boost. And then we're gonna do cheerful for more morale gain. Dwayne will do his big 450 stat buff, 350 LB buff. We're going to do his 150 Amplify, and then just, um, wrong skill. Uh, Arcane Supplementation, Hellfire Infusion, and then just hit the boss with Bolting. Abigail, on this turn, will just refresh cover, because that also fills the morale gauge. So we're going to refresh cover. We're going to do the uh, Anti-Physical Mitigation. And now, this is very important, we have to do SP Drone Type L for the light imbue. Otherwise, she won't be able to chain on the next turn. And then Melissa, on this turn, we're gonna use minutes of might for the morale gain. We're gonna use beast killer on Dwayne, and then another killer on Dwayne, doesn't matter which one. That's just to fill the morale gauge. Okay, so my morale gauge is pretty high on this turn, because I've got like, you know, an EX3, uh, Melissa, all that. But um, if, it's, if it's not as high as mine, this party should still overcap on turn three. So now we need to deal 2.5 damage on turn three. Also, we need to push that threshold. Now you'll notice on turn three, the boss has no buffs. The field is still there, so we're good to go. So what we're gonna do, before we do anything, we're gonna shift the LB, our Sylvie, for the modifier buff. 
we're going to have Melissa triple cast all three of her killers on Rain. That's mostly just to max out the morale gauge, but also to give Rain a bigger killer buff. Now we're going to use the LB of Nora and the LB of Dwayne. Also, I'll mention if your Nora or Dwayne are EX3, this clear will need some adjusting. I am doing this clear with the idea that your Dwayne and your Nora are only EX2, so keep that in mind. Flaring Rain will do his shift at LB, and then we're going to triple Absolute Mirror of Equity with, um, with Abigail. And we'll go ahead and chain this up. Now this should easily do 2.5 billion damage. Um, and now because the HP lock threshold is turned off, we did go further. So we did 3.7 billion. Overkilled by 1.2 billion. So even if your morale is not as high as mine, you should be fine. Now the boss is going to begin to heal. So you see the boss healed up to 46%. Um, if the threshold lock had been on, the boss would have healed to 49, or 59%. It really doesn't matter because now we're going to just be doing some setup and then doing a bunch of bursts in a row to finish off the boss. So, you know, once the HP lock is um, working, just keep following this turn chart exactly as is. So, so now we're going to start setting up for our big good damage skills by using the SLB of Nora, the SLB of Dwayne. We're going to use the SLB of Abigail. We're also going to use the SLB of... Melissa and target Nora for the cooldown reduction when you use Melissa's SLB. <laughs> uh, Sylvie can go to, uh, or we're going to do Demon Killer on Dwayne. We're going to, I'm, wait, was that Dwayne? Demon Killer, yeah, on Dwayne. We're going to do Defense for the Mirage, and we're going to do her Thunder Magnus. Our next big burst is going to be on turn six. Now Flaring Rain can do Grace of Will. That way the um, the LB damage buff is there on turn six. We're gonna do Undermine and then Prominence Fall just to seal the boss with fire damage. Okay. And some you know attacks. Overall, if you've got Abigail, the boss's damage is really not super bad. Um, she does have a, her barrier and all that, so you know it helps out a lot. It might be harder without Abigail, and I'll be doing other clears as the week goes on. But okay, we're still just going to be setting up for now. The boss did reapply the the field, and the boss has some buffs. So we're going to use Nora this turn just to rebuff everything. So we're going to quad cast. We're going to rebuff accuracy. We're going to remove... Whoop, whoops. We're going to rebuff accuracy. We're going to remove the field. Then we're going to do both the killers with Conqueror of Beast and um, Machine. Abigail on this turn will refresh cover and then both of her big breaks. We're going to use Melissa this turn to do shared immunity. Basically, we're just doing a bunch of rebuffing. Shared immunity, Shelga, and we're going to beast kill her on Dwayne. Sylvie is going to go to the base form this round. We're going to do Bolt Egg and then we're going to do Petals and Vines to refresh all those mitigations. And then Dwayne can triple Bolting Strike. And Flaring Rain can triple Pulverizing Force. This is just to deal some damage to the boss to keep him from healing all the way back to 100%. You know, a little bit of damage. The boss will heal back up. We're not really worried about the healing. Just keep healing. We don't really care. You know, we are going to use Melissa's healing down later in the fight. But for now, we're, we're just doing a bunch of setup. Okay, so now it's turn six. Now we're going to go ahead and do a nice big burst. So before we do that, before we burst... We're going to shift Sylvie and do the shift at LB. We're going to have Melissa do seconds of support. Um, whoops. Wait, did it wrong. Ah. Seconds of support on Dwayne. We're going to do Parasol. And we're going to do Beast Killer on um, just Dwayne again. Whatever. Okay, now we're going to LB Nora and Dwayne again. Rain is now going to only use Bolting Strike. We're not going to LB him anymore. So we're going to now do his global global buffed Pulverizing Force three times. And then Abigail will triple Pulverizing Force three times. I'm sorry, Abigail will, tri will triple Bolting Strike three times. And we go ahead and chain this up. This will deal a decent chunk of damage. 
It might even kill the boss, potentially. Hopefully not, because I want to keep showing the fight. Good, good, good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. Now the boss is going to heal some more. We did 2.8 billion damage again. So in that time, we didn't even have a big amplifier, but we still overcapped yet again. Now, if you'd like, you could use less of the 150 amplifies in phase one, save some of them for phase two, and you'll be done with the fight at this point if you want to. But I I'm trying to show it for those of you that don't quite have that powerful of a team, etc. So you'll notice the boss's field is back up again, and the boss has these buffs. Now this attack and magic buff is massive, massively powerful. So what we're going to do, we're going to use Melissa to start off with as the first action. This turn is very important. Melissa goes first. We're going to all consuming darkness. That's going to put healing down on the boss so he heals less. We're going to use Beast Killer on Rain this time. And we're going to bar Darkja. This is also going to imbue the party with darkness. Now, we don't want a dark imbue for this fight, at least not for this team. So what we're going to do now with Sylvie after Melissa, we're now going to use Lightning Blessing with Sylvie. That's going to remove the dark imbue. We're going to Demon Killer on Dwayne, and we're going to Not So Fast. Not So Fast will remove that attack and magic buff. We don't want to use Abigail to do that, because that'll dispel the imbue. We want to leave that imbue there, but we've got to get rid of the attack and magic buff. Okay, and again, the field is still there. So let's go ahead and use the SOB of Abigail. But now Nora is going to quadcast. We're going to first action, remove the field, and then triple Enigmatic Wave. Flaring Rain will triple Pulverizing Force. And Dwayne will triple Bolting Strike. Now, when we do this, we're going to click Nora by herself, and we're gonna wait like a split second for that field to go away. Then we're gonna chain the other bolters and weave Nora in. So we're gonna click Nora, wait for the field to go away, click the rest, and chain all these up. Now, we're probably, well we did. We killed the boss on this turn. My turn chart will have in the comments um, a way to continue going all the way to turn nine if you don't quite finish off the boss on that turn. So the turn chart, is all the way until turn nine. Just keep following it if the boss didn't die yet. But you know, if you're using the same team as me, the boss should die. So there's a perfect score. Again, one of the modifiers is currently bugged. If it was turned on, as you saw, the fight would be literally identical. No difference whatsoever. So here's the damage breakdown. Now keep in mind, we did focus certain buffs on certain units. We, we used a lot of single target buffs in this clear. So this is not the greatest breakdown of everything. But, um, you know, Flaring Rain, very, very strong. Dwayne, also very strong. Nora, pretty good. Um, you know, we do know from calculations, Nora's not quite as good of a damage dealer as Rain or Dwayne. But uh, there we go. And then didn't get stuff. And okay, I'll show you the gear. <coughs> now, the hardest thing with that clear is you have to have the same EX levels as me for Nora and um, Dwayne. Because of the way SLB buffs work, um, if you're Nora or Dwayne are like EX1 or EX3, that specific clear won't line up exactly. You'd have to adjust things, but um, you could definitely adjust it to make it work for your for your party. So here's the team that we used. So just some morale fill on um, Melissa. Other than that, not much matters. We, we mirage all the dangerous hits, so she doesn't really take any damage, so who cares? Just morale fill. As much morale as you can fit. So her own card, Celestite Rod, Treasured Ring, all that kind of stuff. Sylvie is dual wielding a morale card. If you don't have this one, dual wield her own card. Um, or you could use something like another copy of Melissa's card, whatever. Um, we gave her counter just for safety. It wasn't important. wasn't needed. But there it is. So, you know, kind of, honestly, whatever. Um, Dwayne, right here, he does have max to everything with LB damage, so a max LB, max beast, max demon, max machine. There it is. Here's the setup we're using. Um, this does cap on every single killer, and then his own card, and he does decent damage. Uh, Nora is also capped on everything, so we're using two of her fists, um, the control ring, uh, there's the material we're using, and there is her... Um, or a card, not her card, a card. Um, maxed on LB, maxed on Beast, Demon, and Machine. She is a physical type mage, so there you go. Uh, Flaring Rain, both forms geared identical. Again, maxed on everything, max, max, max. And he was he he got all of my best gear, which is which is another reason he uh, was so much higher in the damage breakdown because he got all all the best 
but there it is. And then Abigail is just bulk, so 12.5 spirit, um, some fire, dark, and lightning resist. Uh, she's also a passive provoke and evasion. I don't know if evasion matters. It's whatever. She gears very easily. You know, Abigail's amazing. And there it is. There's the clear. Turn chart will be in the comments. Um, and I will be doing more clears uh, over the weekend. So if you don't have, like, Nora or something, look for the alternatives. See you in a bit.